from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Um, Mo Willems. He's probably my favorite writer here today. Sure, I like Grisham. Simon Shama's a really smart guy. Jody Picot is pretty good. But I'm not sure I can read their books more than once or twice. Mo Willems, on the other hand, brings a smile to my face every time I read him. It should come as no surprise that early in his career, Mo did stand-up comedy. His books have perfect comic timing. Reading Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus is like watching Harold Lloyd or Charlie Chaplin at work. And the cocked eyebrow of the father that comes about two-thirds of the way through Knuffle Bunny, you know the one I'm talking about, is as sublime as Jack Benny's deadpan. Mo studied film and animation in New York, joined the team at Sesame Street, won six Emmys, and I'm so delighted when friends of mine have children, not because of the joy that a new life brings, but because it means I can be the person to buy them a Mo Willems book. He's been honored twice with the Caldecott, and his latest books are Pigs Make Me Sneeze, an elephant and piggy book, and Big Frog Can't Fit In. Please welcome to the National Book Festival, Mo Willems. How you doing? All right. How's it going? Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing like being compared to Harold Lloyd and Buster Keaton. My books are best read in silence. <laughs> Makes me feel so warm. My name is Mo Willems and I make books. <laughs> All right. And that means I have a lot in common with the little guys in the room. You like to draw? Do you like to make pictures and stories? I wish the adults would be yelling as loud as the kids because it's great. Because you do that, that means you do the same thing that I do. That means that you are author illustrators just like me. The only difference between what you do and what I do is that you don't have to give 15% to a guy named Shelly. <laughs> you can do it for fun. But I always hate it when parents bring their kids up and they say, my kid wants to be a writer. No, your kid is a writer. Your kid wants to be published. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna read some of my books, we're gonna answer some questions, we're gonna have some stage stuff and all that, and I'm gonna start off by talking about my latest picture book, which is called Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed. Look at that, double micing. All right, have anybody seen a real naked mole rat? Yeah, okay. For those of you who haven't, Ew. Ew. So when I was deciding I was going to make a book about a naked mole rat, I couldn't make it li look like this because my audience would go, Ew. So I made mine look like this. Oh, right? Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Naked mole rat gets dressed by me. All right. Now, I wish that you could all see the pictures, but there are a lot of you guys and rain. So if you don't, sorry. We open up and we see a tunnel. And here on the end papers, all the way down the tunnel, right at the entrance, is a sign. And it says, no shirt, no shoes, service. Naked mole rat gets dressed by me. Not that I'm dressing the naked mole rat. Make that clear. There's so much to learn about the fascinating little creatures known as naked mole rats. But for this story, you only need to know three things. One, they are a little bit rat. Two, they are a little bit mole. Three, they are all naked. 
Well, they were, with one exception. And see this little guy, he says, look. Wilbur, the naked mole rat who liked to get dressed. Hello. When the other naked mole rats saw him, they said, Ew! Yuck! What are you doing? I like clothes, replied Wilbur. When I get dressed, I can be fancy, or funny, or cool, or I can just be an astronaut. <laughs> well, when the others heard that, they said, Ew! Yuck! If you like clothes so much, then why don't you open a store or something? <laughs> Naked mole rats can be very sarcastic. <laughs> but Wilbur thought it was a great idea. And look, he's got a store. It says clothes. And here's the advertisement. Fun. Warmer. Try it. Sale. <laughs> he thought it was a great idea. The other Naked mole rats did not. They brought Wilbur to a giant portrait of Grandpa, the oldest, greatest, and most naked, naked mole rat ever. Look at that picture, they demanded. Look at his heroic face. Look at his regal bearing. Look at his total lack of clothing. <laughs> Grandpa did look heroic. Grandpa did look regal. But he would also look heroic and regal in a casual shirt and some summer slacks. <laughs> Ugh, said the other naked mole rats. Don't you get it? Naked mole rats don't wear clothes! <laughs> Fump. Why not? asked Wilbur. Something had to be done. The naked mole rats marched right over to Grandpa and told him all about Wilbur, and then he asked why not. Grandpa was very wise. Mm. He thought seriously about everything he had heard. Oh. Then he thought some more. Mm. This is how naked mole rats think, by the way. Mm. You know. Here we go. Finally, he said in a heroic, regal voice, gather the colony. I shall make a proclamation. Anybody know what a proclamation is? It's a very important statement. When Gr Wilbur heard about Grandpa's proclamation, and here he's hearing about it, a proclamation, a proclamation, a proclamation, he knew it was serious. But he had no idea what to wear. <laughs> Should he be a beatnik? Zorro, cowboy, a businessman. Kids, just so you know, at this economy, the businessman is least likely to make a living of the four <laughs> of these career options. I say go Zorro. <laughs> there are not many health benefits, but besides that, pretty good. In the end, Wilbur decided to play it safe. And there he is. He's got blue socks on. Maybe not safe enough that all these angry, naked mole rats staring at him. The others were so busy looking at Wilbur's socks that no one noticed Grandpa enter until he cleared his throat and proclaimed, <coughs> Fellow naked mole rats, I had never worn clothes until I heard Wilbur's simple question, Why not? Do, why not indeed? Do clothes hurt anyone? No. Are they fun? Well, they may not be for everyone, but this old naked mole rat wishes he had tried getting dressed earlier. Then Grandpa complimented Wilbur on his socks. As fast as his little legs could take him, Wilbur rushed home, put on his favorite outfit, and dashed back. When he returned, Wilbur discovered he was not alone. Much has been said about that day, but for this story, you only need to know three things. One. Some of the mole rats were naked. Two, some of the mole rats were clothed. Three, all of the mole rats had a great time. No exceptions. The end. You like that story? All right. All right. Let's see 
if anybody, quickly, we're going to go and do other stuff, but if anybody has any questions about this story or stories that I make, I promise I will answer any, well, you can ask me any question you want, and I will answer any question I want. <laughs> Remembering that a question is something you do not know. I have a pony is not a question, right? Let's see if you have a question. What was your inspiration to start writing? What is my inspiration to start writing? Well, I am very bad at lawyering. <laughs> I'll tell you though where I get my inspiration because I'm very lucky. I get my inspiration every month in the mail. It comes in a little envelope and I open it up and I look at it and suddenly I am inspired to do great profitable things. <laughs> and this piece of paper, this magical piece of paper is called a mortgage. Because <laughs> it is my job. And that's part of being a writer. A writer isn't just coming up with cool things, it's thinking of things when you're supposed to think of things and trying to make them work so that your audience will want them more and more. Let's see if we have any other questions. I'm gonna run down here, run, 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 here. Um, why do you put a pigeon in, it, in the piggy and elephant book? She's showing the back of the elephant and piggy books and there's a pigeon that snuck in. Has anybody noticed that there's a pigeon in every one of my books? Yeah. All right, well here's the secret. The pigeon is a stinker. And he hates it when I make books that are not about him. <laughs> and when I decide to make a book that is not about him, and I go to bed in the middle of the night, he sneaks into every one of my books. <laughs> he is a jealous bird. Thank you for that wonderful question and a segue, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to help read an elephant and piggy book. You wanna hear an elephant and piggy book? Yeah. Awesome. Here's what I believe. I believe that books should not just be read, they should be played. And one of the great things about making elephant and piggy books is they are written as plays. And usually, I have a crack team of actors, the Mo Willems Troop Ensemble Players, that I bring with me across the nation. They are all Oscar-winning actors in my imagination. <laughs> but unfortunately, they could not make it here today because they are imaginary. <laughs> so instead, I have some wonderful actors and actresses that I have called from the audience to play the parts. Let's introduce them. Please, come on up first. Young lady. There we go. All right. What is your name? Oh, one sec. I got to get the books. Got to get the books. All right. What is your name, dear? Aaron. 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 Please take a book. You are a piggy. All right, next up, next up. What is your name? Trixie. Trixie, I don't know if I've ever met you before. <laughs> it's a nice name. You are a, a relentless dog, just by chance. It's not like you were cast that way. And your name is? John. John, Dawn, you are a pelican. And because, as you can tell by Trixie, I believe in nepotism, the lovely uh, Cher Willems will stand up here and show the book to everybody. Here we go, dear. There we go. And I, I have casted myself as the elephant. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a big hand for the Mo Willems Troop Ensemble Players Group. Take a bow. <laughs> we'll start off. Open up your books. Get ready. And you get the first line there on the title page. Today I Will Fly. By Mo Willems. <laughs> and Alvin and Piggy are sitting back to back. And suddenly Piggy jumps up and says, Today I will fly. No. You will not fly today. You will not fly tomorrow. You will not fly next week. You will never fly. You will not 
not fly. She will not fly. I can't find it. Turning pages is always difficult for actors. Fly, 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 fly. That's the exact number of flies. <laughs> awesome. Turn fly, the page. One more. Fly. Awesome. <laughs> you need help. Thanks. I do need help. I'll get help. <laughs> Turn the page. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, the doggy. There we go. All right, now Piggy is up on my head. For uh, union rules, she won't actually be up on my head. All right. I did it! I flew! Thank you for your help. You did not fly. I didn't. I did not fly. You jumped! I jumped. <laughs> it was a big jump. Yes, it was a big jump, but you did not fly. I'll go try again. I will eat lunch. <laughs> Goodbye. Fly, fly, fly! <laughs> Now, she's hanging up by a thread, <laughs> much like my career at this point. <laughs> As Elephant comes back in. Hello! Hello! You! You are flying! You are flying today! My friend can fly! She can fly! Oh, water. <laughs> I'm not flying. You are not flying? She's lowered by the pelican on the string. Elephant is aghast. Thank you for your help. They sit back together. Elephant wistfully says, tomorrow I will fly. Good luck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the world's here to the Wonderful work. Keep your books. Keep your books. Thank you so much. All right, let's go back and see if we got a couple more questions. Any more questions, questions, questions? Yes? Just yell it out. You were thinking of a funny question? That's awesome. <laughs> Have you thought of it yet? That would be great. Do real naked mole rats ever get dressed? No, because they sleep in. They're, they're very late sleepers. Yes, ma'am, question. Why do I like to use expressions when I perform my books? What are you talking about? <laughs> I like books to be yelled and screamed and manhandled and kaflubied because they are to be played. And I am somewhat punk rock, even though I look like I went to Hogwarts today. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> yes? Was Knuffle Bunny a real thing that happened in my life? Anybody who thinks that that story is a true story, raise your hands. Anybody who thinks that I made up that story, raise your hands. Well, the story of Knuffle Bunny is a completely true story, with one exception, the things that I made up. <laughs> but I'll tell you a couple Knuffle Bunny trivias. There will be a third and final chapter of the Knuffle Bunny saga. It will end the trilogy. And I don't want to give away too much, but there's a bus and a pigeon driving it. No, not really, but that would be cool. <laughs> That'd be really cool. All right. 
More Knuffle Bunny trivia. I am currently working on the words and lyrics to a Knuffle Bunny musical. <laughs> Knuffle Bunny, a cautionary musical. And it will premiere at the Kennedy Center next May, and then it will travel around the country disturbing children <laughs> across the nation. And the big Broadway number, the big event, will be sung entirely in gibberish. I have spent the last few months wondering what rhymes best with flaggle. Is it traggle or daggle? So I work hard. All right. I have a feeling my time is running out, so I am going to read, finally, my latest elephant and piggy book. This is called Pigs Make Me Sneeze. And it's, you know, ripped from today's headlines, obviously. Well, we were starting on figuring out how to market this. I said viral. <laughs> viral marketing, but they were not so into it. <laughs> All right. All right, it's like law and order. Pigs make me sneeze. The latest elephant and piggy book. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. We open up the end. Papers are very important. They tell us something about later what will happen in the plot. And in this case, it's someone sneezing. Look at that, it's so new it still has its hoobie hobby on it. Pigs make me sneeze, by me. There's Gerald hanging out, and in rolls Piggy, and Piggy says, Gerald, what do you want to do today? Gerald says, I want, oh, yes, oh, a, a what? Oh, a ball, a swim. A hat? Choo! <laughs> Sniff. Are you okay? I do not know. I. Ah! Choo! I cannot stop. Snap! Choo! <laughs> Sneezing. Oh no! What if? What if? What if pigs make me sneeze? Mm -hmm. Ah, shoo! What if you tried to sneeze more softly? <laughs> Sorry. But if pigs do make me sneeze, then I cannot be near you. Then we cannot be friends. Then we must be apart forever! But Gerald, no. <laughs> Do not speak. <laughs> it is too late. I, no, 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 no. But Gerald, he walks on, mm -hmm. <laughs> sniff, are you okay, Gerald? No, I am not okay, Dr. Cat. Pigs make me sneeze, and Piggy is a pig. <laughs> Piggy is also my best friend. <laughs> Great. Now cats make me sneeze, too. Thud. I do not think pigs make you sneeze. I do not think cats make you sneeze. I think you have a cold. A cold? You are sick. I am sick! Oh, thank you, doctor! Piggy, Piggy, great news! I have a cold! Good for you. Man, you like that? Thank you, guys. <laughs> keep reading, keep writing.
I love you all. Thank you so much. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.